Because when we fast, follow me on social media. 
you know, we get what? Three S's. We get what? Shaped. What's the number S? We get sharpened. What's the next S? We begin to see things. Yes, we do. You enter into a place and you begin to see things that are even hidden. God opened your spiritual eyes. And sometimes even your ears, they begin to discern things in the spirit. And you begin to stand with someone and, and, and instead of trusting them, you don't trust them anymore, but you continue to love them. Because God has already shown you the my God. So if you think you are getting into a fast to remain the same, no, you are going through a process of resetting. And when you reset, it means that there are things that are changing. You see, the biggest thing that the enemy has against us is change. We are afraid of changing. And that's the thing that we must love the most. Because the more change, the more that we are in, we are getting in the form that God wants us to be in. The enemy is not scared of what you have to say. He's scared of who you are becoming. He's not scared of your next move. He's scared of your tomorrow. You know why? Because tomorrow is greater than today. So he's afraid of the person that you are becoming. So when you are fasting and you are busy resetting yourself, you are telling yourself back to your original self. The cleanness and the holiness of God. So he says now, how am I going to win better for this person? Because they are reset. They are reset. They are rewritten. They are cleansed again. So they see things better. They hear things better. So the way I used to lie to her, I can't lie to her anymore. Because there was a reset. There was a shift. There was a move. There was a strategic move. There was a shift in the atmosphere. You don't see it, you don't feel it, but there was a shift. You might have not experienced it because you were covered by hunger. But in the midst of the hunger, there was a shift to a new season in your life where you win better and you don't even know that you are resting now. So after we fight with you, because of how victorious you come out of your battle, you have to reintroduce yourself. People will have to know who you are now. And you have to tell them, I am a child of God. I've been reset and called for such a time as this. I'm a child who has brought us in the city gate with authority. Alright. That's not the preaching. But we'll just say prophetically. There has been a move. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And I pray God this morning with this short message that you may anoint my lips with clay and that the grace of the prophetic may move and that the authority of the office may be evident in this house and that the enemy shall not silence the voice of God. Not the voice of man, the voice of God. It's very strategic. God speaks to us through people, but the enemy is intentional of making you see the human form so that you can miss the voice of God. But I pray in the name of Jesus, we will not miss the voice of God. Mm, come on now. All right, so today, the title is Write it down, please. You know we write in the church. The voice of your prophecy shall not be silenced in this season. Oh, my God. Come on now. The voice of your prophecy shall not be silenced. In this season. Amen. I'm not going to get into seasons because we spoke about it and talked about it last week. But there are different ways in which your voice can be silenced. Number one, there are those whose voices will be silenced by the accuser, the opposer, or by the enemy. Because you've been given authority. It is the mandate or the plan of the enemy to silence you. Because he knows that every time you speak, you move mountains. He knows that every time you declare and you pray, you move territories. He knows that every time you open your mouth, things begin to move. 
can shape you. People can make you. People can make you. You can't make me. Some of you you can't make me. You can't make me. I'm a clay, he's the potter. I'm constantly being shaped back into my position. And you can appear, hey, guys, speaking of the spiritual shape, family, shape, shift us. Where you are able to shift from a place to a place. Okay, it's a different story. It's deep. But you see, people in the spiritual, they can move from place to place because of the way they've been shaped, because of the covenant that they've chosen. Those who've chosen the dark world, they are able to shift if you don't know. They shift. They shift from place to place. Why? Because they've been shaped by whoever formed them. Why don't you be shaped by God so that you can move within the supernatural? Because your God is the supernatural God. Your things must begin to move from place to place, from problem to problem, from glory to glory. You're supposed to be international, not because you qualify, but because of who you shape to. Shape to be a global individual. Ever fofa? Can you prove it? Disciples in this season, in 
and it shall be so. Okay, we are saying. And then we got there. She was busy gathering sticks. I'm jumping all around. He called her and asked her, Would you bring me a little water in a jar so I can drink? As she was going there, he called and said, and asked, uh, called and said, and bring me please a piece of bread. This is Elijah speaking to the widow. Twelve. And surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread. Imagine God sent Elijah, and Elijah now speaks to this widow, where he has been sent. Now Elijah is asking for food. And now the widow says, I don't have any bread. Only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jar. I am gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son. And then she says that we may eat and then die. What does that mean? It means that there was no longer provision for them. What she had gathered was very little. This is why she said, although I want to feed you, but I don't have enough to feed you. What I can gather is for me and my son for now. But tomorrow we will be dead because there will no longer be provision. But what this woman did not realize is that this man was a prophet of God and was about to take the trajectory of her life, was about to change the situation, was about to change her future, was about to take her day into her life, was about to shift things around. Don't be afraid to give the little that you have been left with. Don't just say, all I have is ten men. Take that ten men and share it with Elijah.
And the claims of God shall arise. 